Have you wondered what financial advisors actually think about finances? This is your sneak peek at the conversations within Financial Design Studio. Michelle Smallenberger, the CEO here, will be your host as you go behind the designs. Welcome back to the podcast. Today we are talking about financial decisions and that they don't have to be permanent. Jake, welcome to the podcast. Jake is our financial planning associate. Hello, Michelle and podcast world. It's great to be back. Yes. Yeah. We've had a few podcasts. Well, we just had a fun one talking about travel and vacation. Yeah. And I, I listened to that one a couple of weeks ago. I was, I forgot how fun that was. Right. Exactly. It's always fun when we can like talk about fun things. This one is, so we are kind of doing a few here in a row where we're talking about like realistic things, um, just conversations that we're having with people that we keep hearing ourselves yeah. having. So that's why we're like, we should probably remind people or just talk about this um, just for people to be mindful of it. Um, we just want to make sure that if you have questions for us to answer on our podcast that you throw those out. Normally Jake asks this, so I'm actually stealing his thunder here. Um, but we would love to get your questions, Jake, especially Yes. that you can email to podcast at financial design studio.com and um, send those in. We'd love to do an episode where we just answer kind yeah. of the mailbag questions. Yeah. We've had a couple trickle in. And so when we get a few, you know, we'll jump on and answer them. So if you have something that you're curious about or want us to mm-hmm. dig a little deeper, something that mm-hmm. piqued your interest, yeah. go ahead and send it in. Yeah, no, that's helpful. Thank you. All right. So this topic has come up multiple times. I think initially it came up because interest rates are higher. And so we're noticing people not doing all of the same things that they normally do. They're, you know, when you get a mortgage, you're, or you're not afraid to buy that first time house. You're not yeah. afraid to buy a new house and sell your current one when rates are about the same. But now that rates are higher just in the last 12 months, I think people are starting to kind of hesitate with some of these things, even maybe even retirement. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. And, and it's interesting too, because we've been in the, this environment where interest rates have been so suppressed for so long, mm-hmm. it almost has just become like the new normal. Mm-hmm. But if you look back historically, we're not that much higher than historic averages, even though we're, exactly. you know, pushing 7% at the time we're mm-hmm. recording this. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's not that uncommon. You know, if you look back into, into the, the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, where, hey, I have a six and a quarter percent mortgage mm-hmm. and that's fine. Yeah. Um, so I think it's good to kind of put historical context around it, mm-hmm. but that doesn't change the behavior. I totally understand that, you know, mm-hmm. Some people are kicking themselves that, oh my gosh, I could have locked in a 3% rate two years ago and now it's seven. Mm -hmm. Like that's total, I mean, I understand it, especially if you're trying to get into a first home um, or you're trying to maybe go from that initial home to a larger, Mm -hmm. more appropriate home for you now in life. Yeah. That monthly payment could go up a thousand, two thousand, twenty five hundred to where it would have been before. Um, But I think it's not going to last forever, Mm -hmm. right? You know, that's just the way that our economy and and mortgage rates it's cyclical so mm-hmm. we can't say with any degree of certainty when or you know that the the fed will ease a little bit and start mm-hmm. cutting rates yep. but we know it'll happen yep exactly so what we're going to talk about is in all of the you know the different financial plans and the updates that we're doing for clients um, life changes so just like you're saying whether it's that first time home purchase or uh, a near retiree who's getting ready to retire they're going to move to a different state they want to buy a home there or build a home there and doing that now versus maybe when we built the initial plan we said oh let's assume a five percent interest rate but like you said as of today they're like six point nine seven percent. And so now that that isn't what was in the plan. This is the beauty of working with an advisor, having your plan updated on a regular basis. Just walk us through, Jake, what happens when someone says, okay, now it's time to do this. You know, I'm actually starting to think about this. Uh, I want to put this into place. Well, I mean, (laughs) you you said it. Ideally, you've been planning this for a while, Mm -hmm. right? So that you're in a place where your financial situation is robust enough that, you know, flex with this a little bit mm-hmm. and still execute what you want to do. Cause that's mm-hmm. ultimately the goal. Um, but yeah, when this comes up, you know, we're going to, we're going to, uh, you know, obviously update, you know, the current assumptions and situation based on what's, what reality is today mm-hmm. and, you know, identify a few different options for people, right. It, in order to be able to, let's just say sell a current home, uh, you maybe don't have the cash to pay, mm-hmm you know, the entire thing in cash where you're going to be retiring to. Mm-hmm. So you're, you are looking at borrowing some of that. Okay. How, you know, 
what what makes sense from a down payment perspective based on your current cash flow, uh, current mortgage rates. What is this going to look like so you can plan? All right, you have this much a month in your principal interest. We know you're going to have these property taxes. We know you're going to have this homeowner's insurance. This is your outlay. Mm -hmm. All right, that's going to take up X percent of your monthly budget. Mm -hmm. You know, when we add in all those other non-discretionary expenses, how does this yeah. feel? Is this doable? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if it still works in the plan, let's yeah. say the interest rate now and doing it as seven versus yeah. maybe our assumption of five, if it still works, their plan is still on track. Oh, it, totally. might, it might be different than what they yeah. were thinking, but this is where I think it can make someone hesitate to say, oh, I wasn't planning on a yeah. mortgage and especially going into retirement with a mortgage where they didn't think they would have one at all. Yeah. Now it just, I feel like it can make people kind of second guess, should we do that? And so that's where they're really having to decide, oh, so this is where I find us saying, wait a second, some financial decisions are temporary. Exactly. And, you know, don't necessarily think, because I think growing up and we can even think about like the normal working life. Yeah. Um, our careers used to be where you might start at a job, work for 30 years in that same career, but our economy now, mm -hmm. you, you maybe switch jobs much more frequently. Yeah. And so there's that, but even getting your mortgage for a 30 year mortgage, you may set it up that way, but you may only hold it for, let's say a year or two. If rates come down, yeah. we're going to refinance exactly. it to something lower. Yeah, we're going to, yeah, exactly. You're going to, we're going to take advantage of what the best opportunity is as time goes on. Mm -hmm. um, the way I, I would think through this and walk people through it is this is important to you. This is what you want mm -hmm. to do. You know, obviously this, I'm, I'm giving the example of somebody who's got, you know, the, the financial assets and wherewithal that they're able to pull the trigger maybe and retire. Mm -hmm. It's just housing is going to eat up a little bit more of their budget than maybe they initially thought. Yeah. All right. And you know, that's where you need to really look at your specific plan and say, if this is the case, you know, we, we're retiring, you know, we're, we're doing, making this decision, then we need to be able to build the rest of your life around that decision, knowing that when we have the opportunity, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to refinance if, if we're using this housing example, mm -hmm. uh, into something that's a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. Okay. So can you think of, this is what I kind of wanted to talk through other examples, um, that we've seen. So we kind of talked about like career wise yeah. that some of this shift might be because we used to, people used to get a job and they would stay there exactly. for years. And, and stay so, in the same house, quite honestly, it, yeah, for house, 30 years, like, like you said. Mortgage. So I think all of those behaviors, that is what we think, especially of these big things. Yeah. We think of that and we think I'm going to be in this for the long term. Yep. So changing that thinking and now wait, wait, let's, let's not, let's be careful to not say, this is what I'm going to have for 30 years. Right. Um, we might not be here because even the person going into retirement, they might get that larger house. So I think what I see some is um, people getting a bigger house yeah. than what they had, even though their kids are grown up because now they want the kids and the grandkids to yeah. come back and to stay with them. And maybe they're only going to have that house for like 20 years and then they're going to downsize again. So again, like that's a temporary. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think, you know, you brought up a good point there is with any housing decision, at least, you know, from, from my point of view, and certainly if you run the numbers, this, this bears out. If you're not going to be in that house for seven, mm -hmm. you know, eight, maybe even 10 years, it yeah. probably doesn't make sense to buy, yeah. you know, you, you know, so that's another thing to consider. Like, is the, are we just going to go try this area out mm -hmm. for a year or two then rent or, or, you know, look at some sort of like, mm -hmm. you know, you know, extended you know, rental opportunity and, and figure out, is this the place we want to put down our, our new roots per se? Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, if you're going to be there for 20 years, owning is probably going to definitely make the most sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, to, to your point, Michelle, and then, then, you know, let's figure out the best way to do it. Yeah. Okay. Let's, what are other ways that you're seeing people kind of make like temporary decisions? So we are kind of talking on the side of someone has a plan, a time plan and that they know they want to accomplish. And so we're saying, wait, these financial decisions don't have to be permanent. Yeah. Um, you can still accomplish all of those things in the same time frame. But let's say there's someone who is on the other side and like has their financial things in order and they just see an opportunity. They say, wait, rates are really high. Um, housing prices are really high in our area. Yeah. We could take advantage of this. Yeah. Like yeah. That. Actually, I, I certainly have. So my, my younger brother's doing that. They're going through this right now. They got younger kids. They're in an area. They're probably going to be for a while. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't love their current location. Mm -hmm. You know, they, the price of their house has doubled, you know, in the last you know, five or six years. Mm -hmm. So they're actually moving. They, they put their house on the market. They're going to sell it. They're not going to buy right away. Mm -hmm. uh, they found a rental that's mm -hmm. 
really affordable in their area. Um, and they're just going to, you know, take that profit, um, invest it short term, you know, high yield savings account. Mm-hmm. He, we were even talking about, you know, maybe just doing some like, just because short term uh, mm-hmm. rates are so high right now, yeah. you know, doing some four, four week, three month treasuries mm-hmm. just to get that extra yield, but really just sit on that cash and wait until they find that house that they love in the area that they really want, got the cash to, to deploy the down payment. Um, and you know, maybe mortgage rates come down a little bit, but, but if not, they're really being particular on, on what they want to do. Cause they found a situation right now that, you know, is it's an opportunity, right? It's an opportunity for them. And yes, it's a gamble. Like rates could continue mm-hmm. to climb. Right. They could never find that place, but you know, they're young and flexible enough that, mm-hmm. that they decided this was the best move for them right now. So that's another, another idea. If mm-hmm. you're not in an ideal place right now and, and, and you want to, and you have some patience. Yeah, no, I think that's a great one. I think of uh, my sister, her husband, you know, mo- they moved around for jobs. Yeah. But it was funny because it's been like every time housing prices in wherever they were at have been, they, they could literally own something for a year and have a huge gain on it just yes. because it was like in different neighborhoods Certain of markets, Dallas yeah. um, or Kansas, things like this, um, wherever they were. Um, we joke because we're just kind of like they always have the perfect timing and then did kind of the same thing, rented for a couple of years to see. Because what's interesting right now is that... Um, houses there there's high demand there's still demand for houses but there's actually a low supply and so kind of to your point of that low supply people people know what they want right but when there's not enough supply to get what they want yeah do you do you just get a mortgage to just get into a house or do you actually say wait we're gonna rent so that we can find what we want yeah i mean personally i I wouldn't jump into a mortgage Mm -hmm. just to to, Mm -hmm. to own it i mean i think there's a lot of you know Owning a home is very expensive, yeah. you know, not just what you pay monthly mm-hmm. for your, your principal interest, taxes and insurance, yeah. upkeep, maintenance, furniture, mm-hmm. you know, just things always break. Mm-hmm. And, you know, yes, in, in certainly in, in some areas of the country, people have made really good money off, mm-hmm. off of their primary residence. I'm not talking about yeah. investment real estate here, mm-hmm. but their primary yeah. residence. But most of the time it takes a long time. And, the, you know, when you really run the math, it's not that great of a return. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you have the opportunity cost of if I'm putting this down payment of 20% at least mm-hmm. towards this new home and taking on this debt, that money's not invested somewhere else that yeah. could be growing at a, at a much faster rate. So mm-hmm. those are all things that's yeah, to your point, like there's so many factors to consider and it's so mm-hmm. personalized, but it's so worth taking the time to do it. Mm-hmm. Whether you're doing it yourself or you're working with a financial uh, advisor and, and, you know, having them help you take the time to do it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think even too, just common things you'll hear people say, um, oh, renting is a waste of money, but <laughs> not always because it can buy you time exactly. so that you don't get into a mortgage that now you want to get out of and you have those closing costs that actually now might be higher than what renting could have saved you. You know, even though you didn't own yeah. something. Yeah. So so I just think some of these um, common things that we hear aren't always true, even though it might feel like it. Sometimes you gain something. And that, I feel like, is kind of on that opportunity side. Yes. Where, yeah. like, your brother's taking advantage of. I think that's really that's really great that they can. All right. So when we think about some of these things that aren't permanent, we've talked about the big ones, kind of like life home, uh, well, like job, Mm -hmm. uh, and then interest rates. And that's where, that's where this has really come up a lot. And so we're reminding people. Um, so what we don't want people to do is to get afraid of higher interest rates that then they stop doing things that they could have. So this is really where we're reminding people to say, wait, wait a second. Like think about this kind of as a temporary thing right now so that they don't get stuck in this, wait, this fear of, wait, I, I don't want our plan to look like this. We want it to look like it was going to because rates could come down, you know, pretty quickly. And so now they are right back where they were. We don't want them to stop their progress. Right. Exactly. And I mean, you know, we've talked about this on on other other episodes, but you do have, you know, while you're probably not getting outpacing inflation on any cash you're holding right now, you are Mm -hmm. getting yield, right? Mm -hmm. So you're getting Mm -hmm. four, four plus percent. So that's not, that's, I guess, a positive mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> of higher interest rates. Now, inflation is not right. a positive in general. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think this goes back to a, another, you know, kind of broader ethos, mm-hmm. say, is I think that's one thing that I would encourage people listening to this. Your financial life and financial plan should be resilient enough that it doesn't matter what interest mm-hmm. rates are or what the market mm-hmm. is doing. That's why you diversify. You know, you, you build all these 
things into your plan to give you the resilience so that you're not reacting to you know what's going on on a daily weekly or even yearly basis mm -hmm. uh, and there's you know there's a lot of thought and time that, that needs to go into that you know from a risk standpoint from an asset allocation standpoint uh, from a you know choosing where you where you're living and, and employment standpoint every budgeting it all goes into that but our goal when working with clients and and if, if you're a do-it-yourselfer out there you know you're have a plan that's resilient enough that you're not mm -hmm making these short, maybe short-sighted, short-term decisions that it's going to affect your long-term, you know, kind of financial well-being. Mm -hmm. I know that's kind of a, a theoretical way, but that's, that's kind of how I think about, it's easy. You, you turn on any channel, you know, CNBC, MSNBC, Fox Money, there to get your attention. Mm -hmm. And they're there. They're, that's they're literally their entire goal is to get eyeballs. Mm -hmm. Best way to get eyeballs is something provocative, yeah. you know, whether provocative usually on the negative side, but sometimes on the positive side and, oh, mortgage rates, is this the end of the single family home? And mm -hmm. like, just tune all that stuff out. Like, yeah. Just have the confidence that you can, you, you're, you've put the work in, you know, you've been, you've been earning and earning and earning for years. You've, you've taken the time to put this great plan together. Just mm -hmm. let the, let it, let it work. Yeah. And so what you're talking about there is living with confidence. I certainly am talking which about Which is that. exactly what we encourage clients. Like that's, that is the whole point of doing plans and really changing these numbers. That's the fun part of it is really yeah. kind of figuring out how to still accomplish the things you want to, um, gaining that clarity and then being confident. Now, something that's interesting, I just saw it was an article talking about how most retirees won't spend down their money. Oh, that's totally true. Right. Yeah. What's interesting is what happens and this ties into this. I think it's a similar, it's an, it's kind of like an emotion or fear. Yeah. Um, what happens is let's say you have someone who retires on day one, they have, let's just say a million dollars at retirement you've saved. And so now, you know, you don't need all that money on day one. So that continues to grow over the next, maybe say 10 years. Okay. And so what happens then is let's just say it grows. We're just using like really it's big doubled. numbers. Let's just say it's 2 million, yeah. you know, it grows. And at some point inflation, there's kind of like a cross where you do start spending more of it. Um, inflation is higher. So your costs are more. So you start spending more. So now the value of that portfolio starts to go down because you are kind of starting to spend some of the principal. Yeah. So it goes down. But what's happening is that people, I mean, that might be at like age 80 right. that that starts happening to where you just start going into principal. And well, by that time in your life, you're probably not going on all the vacations, all the things that you used to be doing. Yeah. So now you really aren't spending as much. So you still at age 90, 100, you're still left with, yeah. let's just say even one and a half million or more because it kind of keeps growing and you're spending less. So what happens is it's not necessarily because if reading some of the comments um, of this post, it was an article someone linked to <laughs> the people were saying, well, you know, they better not run out of money because if they're working with a financial advisor and then someone, someone in the comments actually said, did you guys read the article? <laughs> um, because it had nothing to do with, was your advisor doing a good job? It had to do with the fact that people aren't spending their money because... I think there can be this fear of I've saved all this money and now it's time to spend it. But once you start seeing that go down, it go down. it's not as exciting as when you were saving for it. It's almost like easier to save and invest it because you see it growing or not growing and then you know you need to change something. Yeah. But once you start seeing it go down, the only the only thing people think they can do is to like spend less. Yeah. And so I think like we actually see a lot of people not spending. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is we just had a conversation yesterday on a client's plan that we're working on a new client who, um, you know, this person was saying, Hey, I, I'm going to retire at this age. And we, we actually looked and we said, but wait, if this much money is left then how much life aren't they living? Exactly, yeah. And so we actually, you know, and this is where we try to come up with what are the cases that we can show them to actually try and get them to live how they want. Cause maybe they just need help thinking outside the box or yeah. thinking, wait, maybe there's more possible. Right. So this one we were trying to say, well, what's the, what's the earliest they could retire. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I just think about that. Like, I mean, do you agree? Is that kind of what you see a lot of people in what you've oh, seen so far? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, I, could, I couldn't agree more. And I, there's a lot of data and evidence out there to support the fact that, mm -hmm. you know, again, to be able to retire with a million dollars is, mm -hmm. you know, some people say, oh, that's not even close to enough. But to right. the majority of people in our country, <laughs> that's a dream, mm -hmm. you know, and that's right, not going to happen. Exactly. So, but but with that caveat, mm -hmm. yes, I think the the psychology and the and the behavior that follows of 
working so hard mm -hmm. to accumulate assets over your working life mm -hmm. to flip that switch and yeah. now start bringing those assets down and spending them mm -hmm. is tough. And that's why, mm -hmm. to your point, that's why so many people are, are unfortunately pass away mm -hmm. and, and have those high balances. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying is let's figure out <laughs> what's right for you. Mm -hmm. Like, all right, so let's take what you have now mm -hmm. and what are your wishes that, you know, you want to pass on from an estate or a legacy standpoint, mm -hmm. whether that's giving to heirs, charities, whatever that is. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. We're going to earmark that. Mm -hmm. That's going to be there. Mm -hmm. Right. And then after that, what are your non-discretionary expenses? You know, mm -hmm. what's it cost to live, eat, uh, clothe yourself, mm -hmm. have, have, an, have a modest you know, life, right? Mm -hmm. There's that number. Everything else is fun. Mm -hmm. Like everything else is you doing what you yep. want to do. Um, and to the example that you just gave, I think from the article, unfortunately, we're all going to age. Mm -hmm. And as we approach end of life, whatever that is for you, mm -hmm. you're not going to be doing the things you did 10, mm -hmm. 15, 20, 30 years mm -hmm. before that. Yeah. It's so this it's so individualized and mm -hmm. you know almost kind of cliche to say, but mm -hmm. having confidence and able to spend money when you have the energy, the mm -hmm. the stamina and the excitement and, and the people that you love in your life to do it with, mm -hmm. that's the time to do it. Mm -hmm. Like don't wait till you know you're eighty five and like, oh mm -hmm. I got all this extra money and now let's go do all this stuff that I wish I would have done when I was sixty five. Like right. or sixty or fifty, whatever that is. Like you put a plan, you know, robust enough and have confidence in that. And then that you have the, the room with which to spend on the things that are important to you when you have yeah. the time to do it. Yeah. And I think you actually had a really good question earlier. So I'm throwing out another one here that another financial decision that's temporary um, could even be retirement. So, yeah. you know, like, OK, I'm going to retire this age. Great. Some people say, but I mean, I'm open to working right. or um, and you had a really good question, like kind of asking why. Yeah. Yeah. Was, so yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's important question for anybody, you know, any client that we're working with or whether you're mm -hmm. approaching retirement or in retirement right now is, is why? Is it because I just turned 65 and that's what I do? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's mm -hmm. a reason. Medicare mm -hmm. kicked in. I don't, <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't need health insurance anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. That could be a reason. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I love it, but it could be a reason. Mm -hmm. um, or are you just, you know, is it time where you, you've, mm -hmm. you've put in your, your work, you're, you're, you're done with it. You've, mm -hmm. you've accumulated what you need to accumulate you, you don't have the passion for it anymore and you know you want other things to do. I think that's a really good reason. Mm -hmm. um, or is it just you don't really like what you're doing, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And so you're just racing, racing, racing towards retirement. What if you found something that you liked to yeah. do that would actually compensate you? Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we do see people do. It's like, you know, I worked this job I didn't love, but it afforded me the life I wanted to do. I retired at 65. I'm kind of bored. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go be a starter at a golf course one day a week. You know, that's income. Yeah. You know, that's going to, that's going to give you more money that you can spend doing the things you want to do. And that's a kind of a silly example, but if, you know, the worst happens, if things get dire, if you're, if you're going to, if you're seeing that you're going to run out of assets, you know, you're going to have to mm -hmm. find a way to mm -hmm. do that. And that often, unfortunately will mean, you know, working later in life. So you're in charge of those decisions. Uh, the, the actions that you make in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s are going to affect the life that you have in your 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, beyond. So mm -hmm. putting that plan in place and adjusting it frequently, again, it's not permanent. You know, it's going to be adjusted as life happens, as life goes on, you know, as, as things both positive and negative happen in your life. So, yeah, no, that's helpful. We're, we're also going to link to um, some other episodes that we've talked. We've touched on some of these things in a lot oh, yeah. more detail, yeah. um, talking about kind of retirement. What does that look like? There's so many ways that retirement can look. Mm -hmm. So you can semi-retire, fully retire, things like that. Take a couple years off because we will see, just like you highlighted, a lot of people that say, I don't want to do this job yeah. anymore. And then they just need like one or two years to take a break from that. Yeah. And then they're like, but I don't mind working. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to do something I enjoy yeah. more or don't have the same stresses, whether it's travel Absolutely. or people or whatever the circumstances. Mm -hmm. So there's that one um, just talking about retirement. Bottom line is, is have the plan that's resilient that gives you the confidence to do what you want to do. Yeah. And then you don't have to worry about all the who cares what interest rates are doing. Yeah. yeah. It, it, I don't like paying more for pairs, but that, <laughs> I, what am I going to do? Not have pairs? I love pairs. Right. The other episode I was going to link to was um, just financing. So when we talk about some of these oh, yeah. things, we talk more in depth about this um, in a few just episodes ago. And so I just want to kind of link to that because if you want to go more in depth on those, um, if this is something that you find yourself in the middle of that you could actually think a little bit further yeah. on that. 
we've just, we've talked about a lot of things that are not permanent. So these decisions that I think we used to think were permanent, once I decide to do it, I'm done. That's it. Yeah. Um, but there are some things that should be permanent. So um, I just want to kind of spend a couple minutes on this and... I guess any that you can think of that should be permanent for sure when you're thinking about your finances. Yeah, I think, again, when you're putting your plan together, let's say you are still in your accumulation working phase, is Mm -hmm. figure out what that, you know, either percentage or dollar amount that you need to be saving is and Mm -hmm. stick to it. Mm -hmm. I know, yeah, you can change it, but ideally you're changing it by saving more, not less. Mm -hmm. But, But whatever it is, if it's 10%, 15%, 20%, Stick to that and, yeah. and make, you know, automate it so you don't have to think about it. So it's just happening. So that money's accumulating in the background. Um, I would also say one other thing is don't change your asset allocation uh, just because of sh- what's going on in the short term. Like mm-hmm. either by yourself or working with your advisor, you've put enough time and thought into your life, your goals. Um, this is what we need. Mm-hmm. This is the this is the asset allocation we're comfortable with at this stage in our life. Mm-hmm. Just keep going. Just keep piling money in. Yeah, that's actually a really good one. Um, I just had a conversation with someone yesterday who was talking about, you know, a few years ago, I just got out of the market. Um, and, you know, kind of like an emotional decision. Um, and one of the things in, in their plan that was, it was kind of something where this wasn't a client, it was someone else, but mm-hmm. like in their overall plan, it's one of those things where, you know, I just kind of said, Hey, um, you know, usually investing like in your portfolio, we need, we're trying to keep up with inflation yep. because, um, the costs of what you're spending money on will increase. And so in, by investing and in that, those assets growing, you're really keeping up with those costs so that later Mm -hmm. when the costs are higher, your investments have grown too, to keep up with them. But that was something that like, when you make a decision like that, which was a permanent decision, like in their mind of, I'm I'm just getting out of the market. You're now like that. You've made that a permanent decision rather than maybe I got out, but I needed to get back in, you know, a year later, or I need someone to help me figure out how or when to get back in. But like this, these are like sometimes these permanent things we make that are permanent can actually hurt your plan. And so it's just so interesting how like on all of these different sides, you really have to think, you really have to kind of have an open mind and think, okay, for this season right now, for what I'm trying to do, but not necessarily forever. Yeah. So, so yeah, no, that's a good one. You made a really good point of saving, like the permanent, what should be permanent is that you are saving and spending, you are breaking out and doing something. Yeah. Not, um, it, you're right. The, like the percentage could change. Yeah, it could. Uh, you know, as certain parts of your life, you're going to be able to save more than others. That's just mm-hmm. life. You yeah. know, well, you know, if you're busy with kids and a ton of extra expenses, maybe the savings rate gets hit a little bit, but then you get a raise or you get a new position, you get a promotion, all of a sudden income goes up. Okay, now we can get back to where we were. So Mm -hmm. yeah, everybody, everybody approaches it differently. The point is just keep doing it. Yeah. And I think that's the thing. Like when I've seen people like decrease or stop savings, um, it's because they say, well, I need this money for something else. But the problem there is usually if that's kind of the decision factor that's being used is it doesn't get turned back on because you kind of get used to that extra money. And so that's where you have to be careful. So that's where there are some decisions that should be permanent. So it's a really good example of that one. All right. Anything else you think would be helpful to share? I feel like we've kind of talked through just a lot of good reminders. I'd say I hope everybody's having a great summer. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. it's a good time of year to be doing things outside, traveling a Mm -hmm. little bit if you if you have. Hopefully, you enjoyed our last podcast on Mm -hmm. some travel. Uh, But no, I don't really have anything else. Send those questions in if you have them. That's right. Where should they send them, Jake? Send those to podcast at financialdesignstudio.com, and I will respond. That's right. You will get a response. Um, No, this has been really helpful. Thanks for helping us just kind of flesh out and talk through. I think really what we're trying to do is just help people continue to have confidence in the plan that they've been building, that they've had, and we know there's going to be changes along the way, but even with those changes, you can still be confident in following through and accomplishing all of those things you want to. Exactly. Yep. Thanks so much for joining me. This is Thanks been for helpful. having me. Yes, and we'll see you next time on the next episode. Thanks for listening. To find any links or resources related to this episode, check out our show notes. Your host was Michelle Smallenberger, a certified financial planner and CEO. The guests featured are from Financial Design Studio, a team of experienced fiduciary fee only advisors based in Chicago. Anna Lewis is the executive producer of the Behind the Designs podcast. And as always, for more information about Financial Design Studio and who we are, check out our website, financialdesignstudio.com.
And final note, no content discussed on this podcast should be taken as financial advice. Financial Design Studio accepts no responsibility for your individual choices. We'll see you in the next episode.